Happy Friday, everybody. What's going on? I'm Alison Hunjavani, joined by managing editor of Wordchant.com, Ira Schofell, and director of original content and executive producer of The Jeff Cameron Show, Tom Lang. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel in the lower right corner. You've been alerted to this as it happened. We bring you breaking news on a Friday. Maybe I'll set the thumbs up because apparently a lot of you want to hear this news. But uh, as we join you here on this Friday afternoon, uh, just shy of 3 p.m. Eastern time, we did receive news and we'd been tipped off over at Wordchant.com, a potential change of the baseball program. Florida State dropped a release at 2.30 p.m. going ahead and saying that they will not be bringing back Mike Martin Jr., who had been the head coach for Florida State since 2020 in his two and a half seasons, a record of 77 and 54. Florida State able, though, to make it to the NCAA tournament in both full seasons of his reign. 25 years in total coaching at Florida State comes to an end. The Martin name, to a certain extent, also possibly coming to an end for Florida State baseball. Now, this might sound crazy to a lot of people that, that this happened, Ira. I mean, I don't want to say it's a shocking thing. I'm surprised he had one more year left on his contract, thought he might finish that out. But, um, you know, this might be something that might not have been surprising to people like you that are a little more dialed into things. Well, it really kind of seemed like it escalated throughout the week. You know, last weekend uh, when Florida State lost, they went one and two in the uh, regional that Tom actually attended over there at Auburn. And, and Tom was actually um, – kind of texting texting us some stuff from the from the stands that, uh, you know, just hearing some of the dissatisfaction from some of the, the people around the program, families and things like that, and people were not being real shy about it. Uh, and then that continued after the season ended. And so, yeah, I mean, at the end of the season, you know, as we talked about it, Corey and I and you and, and Gene and everybody, we kind of felt like, okay, he's got one more year on his contract. Really the big question here for, for Florida State with Mike Martin Jr. is, do you give him an extension, which you normally would do to help with the recruiting, or do you say we can't do that because things have gone so poorly and and, uh, and make him a lame duck, essential head coach? Uh, but then as the week went on, we just kept hearing more and more about uh, families, you know, players, their families, uh, expressing frustration about not just the season, but about the way the program is going, about the way their concerns about the future of the program. And so from what you know, we were hearing during the week was, you know, even if Michael Alford had kind of gone into last weekend thinking, okay, no matter what, we're going to give it one more year and see how it goes. It'll be as Mike Martin Jr.'s third full year as head coach. Um, things were getting so hot that he was at least going to have to look at it. And after looking at it and uh, doing his uh, due diligence, I guess, you, know, you can see his comments that he released today that he felt he was concerned about the future of the program. And, uh, you know, they went ahead and made the change. And so it's, it is shocking from the standpoint of, uh, you know, it's less, it's three years, basically. And Mike Martin Jr., whose dad is a legend and, and built that FSU baseball program. Um, but also it was kind of building up, I think, over this last week. Tommy, you were there in Auburn. Um, I know we don't want to go totally uh, prisoner of the moment, but there had been patterns developing, I guess, over the last, you know, two and a half or two seasons full, three, uh, he's been on the job. What did you see in Auburn? What have you seen here the last, you know, two and a half seasons? that might have not made this as shocking for some folks, Tom? Well, first of all, Aslan, maybe we shouldn't have traded places because they won when you were there. So uh, maybe, maybe uh, you should have stayed there and uh, I should have stayed back in Tallahassee. But, um, you know, some of the things that if you watch Florida State baseball game for game, if you're one of those diehards that lives here in Tallahassee that either, either has season tickets or you find a way on ACC Network Extra to watch every single game, you'll see base running errors. Um, you'll see basic baseball fundamentals that haven't been followed. Like, for example, uh, a second baseman running and colliding with a right fielder in, like, deep right field for a simple fly ball. Little things that add up to extra outs for an opposing team or fewer outs for Florida State when they're on offense. And and that's something that happened towards the end of Mike Martin Sr.'s tenure at Florida State. And the explanation at the time was, well, at that point, how engaged is 11 in day-to-day -day operations? And, and might they just need another voice to make sure that things are ironed out and things are the way they should be. It didn't really happen that way. Once there was a, a full staff, um, if that was your argument, once there was a full staff to pay attention to the team and the roster, you didn't see progression. You didn't see progress and development. There was a lot of regression, and that you know reared its head again in the Auburn Regional. Uh, you saw disinterest at times on the field, in my opinion. Certainly in that 21-7 to loss to Auburn, I saw disinterest. Uh, disgruntled families in the stands and people around the program and fans in the stands. That's going to happen when you get blown out no matter what. I don't want to you know, necessarily tie that to, to this particular firing of Mike Martin Jr., but there's, these are just symptoms. And we heard a lot of noise in the machine, as Ira was talking about. There was a lot of noise this week, late last weekend into this week. And 
it, I guess, became too much to ignore in reality for the athletic department. But anybody who watches FSU baseball inning by inning knows exactly what's going on with this group. And that's they they win in spite of themselves when they win. They don't they're not greater than the sum of their parts. And I guess that's what Michael Alford decided was just too much to, to move forward with. Ira, you mind if I read the uh, statement here? This was uh, issued by Florida State Athletics. This comes from the athletic director, Michael Alford. Making the change with our baseball coach was not an easy decision, but it is our responsibility to put our student athletes and our teams in the best position to reach their full potential. Ultimately, the decision came down to whether our baseball program was performing up to the admittedly high standards that we have established through our historic success. And I do not believe we were. We deeply appreciate all Mike has done for the program as head coach and as an assistant and as a seminal student athlete. His passion for the university and baseball program is unequaled. I am sure I speak for all fans when I say we wish him and his family nothing but the best. Um, and that, that's I don't want to say it's a strongly worded statement there, but I mean, this ultimately comes down to the fact that this program really, I mean, we have to really go back 20 years to, to where we were in the heyday of Florida State baseball, the late 90s and the early part of the 2000s. And it just hasn't really been able to get back on track with his either his father, or what we think Mike Martin Jr. would be able to get done. Um, I, I guess, you know, just is was he a victim of his father's own success or do we ultimately think that this falls on just Mike Martin Jr.'s inability to to recruit a proper uh, roster and, and get them to perform? Well, I don't know if you can point to recruiting because I think they've recruited pretty well. In fact, going into the season, Florida State was picked to win the, the ACC. So, you know, if you're a victim of anything, it might have been, you know, kind of the expectations of, of the team you had put together. They were the preseason pick of the coaches to win the ACC this year, and they finished ninth. Um, and, you know, they were terrible on the road. Uh, as, as Tom said, there were a lot of problems. Now, I mean, like, you know, we've known – I've known Meat now for over 20 years, always been great to us. I have a good relationship with him. I've always liked him. Uh, I think he care. I mean, as, as Michael Offord said in that statement, cares deeply about this program. And for years, um, you know, really poured, you know, a lot into this program. And so uh, it's tough. I'm sure it's tough for a lot of people around the university, uh, especially the people that love Mike Martin Sr. And this is going to be a challenge for the university and some donors and and Mike Martin Sr. who all wanted that to work out. Uh, so it's a tough situation for a lot of people. But I think at the end of the day, Michael Alford's responsibility is, as the athletic director, to run, to, to put, to give that program everything it needs to be as successful as possible. And if there was enough concerning issues in the program, then he, you know, he owes it to the school to make a change. And, you know, something we've all talked about over the last 20 or 30 years during the last 10 years of Coach Bowden's tenure and, and certainly uh, towards the end of Coach Martin's tenure, Coach Martin Sr.'s tenure is, you know, it's not about these iconic coaches. It is about the university. And, and so I think it's, it was probably a tough decision. But, um, you know, I think ultimately they did what probably they had to do. It, this team performed – way under expectations and had so many embarrassing losses and, and there really wasn't a lot. And yes, it was only year two full seasons. He had the half season uh, with the COVID, uh, but just didn't seem like things were going in the right direction. Then you add in again, a lot of disgruntled families and, and people around the program that just kind of adds to where, Hey, are you going to make the decision now? Or are you going to wait till next year? And if you wait till next year, maybe it becomes tougher to get the coach you want uh, to, to be the next head coach. Yeah. Tom, you know, Hasn't been three full seasons. Some people might say not enough data, but I mean, you being at Auburn, you hearing some of the the the, the hubbub from from people who are truly invested in the program with their children playing for the team. I guess maybe does that kind of uh, create the equation, the calculus that makes it seem like this was the right time to do the move? Well, yeah, I, I do want to qualify that just a little bit. Anytime that something isn't going right, I think in the win and loss column, there might be a disgruntled mumble or two from a family member uh, in the stands. So I, I don't think that's abnormal uh, and it's only unique to the situation. But I, I think real, real quick, Tom, not to interrupt you, but I just do. There is a difference, though, between just complaining and then if there's valid, if they're pointing to valid criticisms. Yep. Yep. And Michael Alford is a baseball guy, sees those as valid criticisms that elevates it. It's not just. Complaining Correct. parents, because you're right. Complaining yeah. parents happen all the time when teams aren't succeeding. I would think a head coach, a position coach, and whatever sport or an athletic director hear uh, from parents all the time on on minor matters or things that don't have legitimacy. But Aslan, what you're getting at here is there was an urgency felt by Michael Alford because it would be easier to to roll the dice, maybe extend Mike Martin Jr. one year more, and then say, all right, so uh, recruiting wise, you can project that he's going to be here. We're not going to make it tough on you as a recruiter here. Coach Martin Jr., but they didn't decide to do that. There was an urgency, and I think what Ira just said at, at the previous part of his answer, or, or at the end of his previous answer, really drives it at home. 
uh, you don't make a move like this, I don't think, unless you've got somebody lined up to replace the current person in a position. So in short, they got somebody or a collection of folks that they know can step right in and take over at Florida State and be the head baseball coach. You wouldn't do this at this point in the calendar to start uh, a search, I think, from scratch. I think they've got a pretty good inkling of where they're going to go. I don't know who that is. But again, I just I, I don't think you make a move this quickly after the season unless you've got a pretty good idea of where you're going to go next, especially when the name is Martin Jr. Hey, and on that note, this will be a good indication of what Michael Offord is as an athletic director because, to your point, Florida State did not do that when they fired Willie Taggart. We all thought they might have. We all thought they had something in place to fire a coach in less than two seasons. They did not. They basically started the search then, and they ended up with Mike Norvell, and he may be successful, but it wasn't like they had that deal done already. This was, you know, so you'd like to see that, to your point, you, 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 what you don't want to have happen is make this change and then get played by a bunch of head coaches for, for raises at their other schools, and then you end up settling for somebody you don't want. So that that is going to be interesting to see. I think you're right. I think Mike, Michael Offord may have a good feeling of who that guy is, and we could talk about some of the candidates. Um, but but I think this is all going to kind of, again, this is all, we're all evaluating Michael Alford in his first year on the job, and this is another uh, litmus test. Yeah, I, I hope Aslan and I or you guys appreciate the fact that I was in litigator mode as you put up Gene's comment. You know, I was I was being very general, and then there's the subtext of what Gene Williams has to say <laughs> that's at the bottom of the screen. I think, you know, for any Florida State fan, connected or not, that's the first name that, that comes up is, is Link Jarrett. We'll, we'll see. Uh, he's obviously still coaching right now, but we'll see if that's the name that comes out in the end. But uh, yeah, I, I think at this point, Ira and Aslan, given what we know about Michael Alford, I, I don't think you would take this step unless you know the next step or uh, potential steps to come. That makes sense. I, but I just I think this job has got to be so good that I, this maybe you could be overconfident that you, you'd be able to figure it out on the fly. I mean, I, I do agree with you guys. I, I would imagine if you're going to pull the rug from underneath a family who's been associated with this program for, you know, the better part of 50 years, uh, you're going to have a, a plan ready to roll in there. But again, I just think there's, this is still remains just such a, a preeminent job in the field that, you know, they would be able to find somebody, even if plan a falls through. But with that said, you know, Gene Williams, founder of Ministry of Warchant.com says that Link Jarrett probably will be, you know, one of the candidates obviously here uh, up for, uh, you know, the, the job. They're, can They're going to have to really offer money, though, right? I mean, here's the, the only thing I, I don't want to defend Meat here, but man, Meat was making four hundred thousand dollars a year, which I think would have put him maybe second lowest in the SEC behind Missouri. And Missouri truly does not care at all about their baseball team. They're going to have to do something really. Uh, they're going to have to well, go. Go ahead. I said two things about that. Number one, Meat. They got Meat cheap because that was part of the selling to get Meat the head coaching job. I mean, I think that was kind of part of the the appeal, uh, because there were, there was some pushback. You know, there were a lot of people who did not want Mike Martin Jr. to, to get that job, uh, rightly or wrongly. And the program was not really trending in the right direction, despite the run to Omaha in 2019. So there was a lot of pushback. And one of the appeals, I think, to the university, who was having some financial issues at the time, was, you know what, we'll get Mike Martin Jr., we'll give him this chance. He's put in 20-something years. The dad has done so much for the program. And it won't cost us a fortune. We don't have to go out and spend a million-plus to get a head baseball coach. But I think when you look at the fact that what Mike Alford just offered the soccer coach, Mark Corian to stay, uh, and then what he's re-upped with Lonnie Alameda, those, those are pretty nice salaries. Those are a lot more than Mike Martin Jr. was apparently making and for sports that are not revenue sports. And baseball can be a revenue sport. It's not usually a big money maker, but if your baseball program is good, you actually can be in the black side of the ledger, not the red. And uh, – so I think that I think they're I think Michael Alford's going to be willing to spend more uh, on baseball. So I, I don't think that's a, as big a concern. The other thing I want to say is it's not just about um, maybe you know when you talk about the timing of it, it, it may not just be that he already has a good feeling of who the new coach is. There was another pressure, and that was the pressure of these other players. You know what we were hearing. It's not substantiated, but we we're hearing that you know some players, a couple of players, a few players went into the portal this week. Ross Dunn, who's a big time pitcher. Uh, did not have a great season, but has a big time arm. He went into the portal earlier this week. We were hearing that other players were talking about going into the portal. So the longer this went on, you might have lost some of your other players into the portal. They got some really nice, talented young players. So that might have been another timing pressure besides, oh, I've already got something lined up. He may have wanted to make a move to kind of alleviate some of those concerns. 
I mean, you talk about making revenue. I mean, if you put it on ESPN2 right now, which you shouldn't, you should be watching us and hitting the thumbs up button, but you would see that the Texas ECU regional out in Greenville. I mean, that place is packed to the gills, and they're making some money today over in Greenville, North Carolina. So if Florida State can get back to hosting these regionals and supers, I think also made with a new name, Tom, you know, we had we had seen waning attendance uh, throughout the, the last few seasons here. Obviously, COVID attributes some of that, but, I mean, does this maybe – this whole this new sort this is an entire new page in, in history for florida state baseball to have a, a person that's you know maybe not associated with mike martin senior who did an incredible job for this program obviously uh, i mean does, does that give you maybe a renewed sense of enthusiasm you think for a fan uh, when they see a, a coaching search and some of the names that are probably going to get bandied about i think it's no secret that there's a large segment of the fan base that will feel exactly what you're talking about today for me I, I, i'm kind of like ira I, I don't know mike martin jr for 20 plus years but i know him for a good period of time so just on a on a one to one level, this is uh, not an easy day. This is not an easy segment to do. But I also, if you just look at the program and and you see the things that weren't happening and uh, the direction that it was going, you know, a COVID year, you can understand. And and they were off to a good start that year before the pandemic kicked in. Um, twelve and five. Twelve and five. Yeah, it's just the the problem is um, you look across the board. By the end of this season, uh, who was better than when the season began? I mean, just look up and down the lineup as as hitters, look up and down the rotation, starters and relievers. Like who was markedly better by the time they went to the Auburn Regional uh, than when they started play in February? And I don't know that the that the answer is very many players were. And um, I think even at the plate where he was synonymous with FSU baseball's offense when he was the assistant coach and the recruiting director under Mike Martin Sr., uh, they had an approach. They had a plan. They did certain things well every single year, and I, I couldn't define for you right now what exactly Florida State's uh, offense and offensive philosophy is all about. So, again, this is something where Michael Alford felt the urgency to make a move, and that's the other part to this story today is if you're wanting to learn more about the new athletic director, you just added a big line in bold face about what Michael Alford's about, uh, and that's going to project to other hirings and firings to come, extensions or what have you at Florida State for different um, athletics programs. It, he's made quite a few statements in the last six months, a lot by necessity, uh, but this one was a choice, and, and he made one, and he made one rather quickly. I mean, Ira, for so long, this has been, you know, more or less, and I don't want to use that as like a derisive term, but like a mom and pop operation, Florida State Athletics. I mean, they were lucky enough to, to find Bobby Bowden and hold on to him for as long as they did. Um, you know, Mike Martin Jr., or Mike Martin Sr., rather, was, was well compensated, but this day and age, I mean, all these top coaches are getting well into seven figures and 11 was never hitting that. I mean, does this kind of show, again, to your point about what they offered Kikorian, the, the outgoing soccer coach, what they offered Lonnie Alameda keeper, that this is kind of like a new, brave new world of, of, of athletics that's being forged here by Michael Alford in terms of going after uh, top targets and, and, and compensating coaches and, and supporting them with all they need to be successful? Well, I mean... We've all been around Michael Alford. Uh, I mean, we've all, he's been here now for a couple of years. One, he's just in his first year as AD, but he was around for about a year uh, as uh, running Seminole Boosters. And I don't think any of us come away from talking to Michael Alford thinking that's a guy who's going to want to keep a low profile and just kind of do things on the cheap. You know, I mean, he's he's going after big ticket items. He's you know he's made it. You know, he's a, not just a a plan. I mean, he's vowing that they're going to build this football facility after all this talk for six, seven years. It's going to happen. They're going to break ground at the end of the season. Um, he's completely got this plan to completely renovate Doe Campbell Stadium with the suites and the, uh, the loges and all this other stuff that uh, hasn't been done. That stadium hasn't been touched in over 20 years. Um, so, I mean, yeah, he's a guy that is is kind of a mover and shaker. And so he's going to want to make things happen. I don't think, you know, again, he, he – opened up the, 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 you know, the bank to try to keep Mark Kerkorian. Uh, he's done a lot to keep Lonnie Alameda. And I think that, you know, he's going to want to go get a real legitimate big time baseball coach. And, and now, you know, whether it's Link Jarrett, look, everybody's going to want Link Jarrett. The only issue there is a lot of schools are going to want Link Jarrett. He's had tremendous success at Notre Dame. Florida State probably could have got him a couple of years ago. They didn't. They went with Mike Martin Jr. Uh, now he's had the success at Notre Dame, but other schools are going to be interested as well. He's playing this weekend for uh, in the in the Super Regional against Tennessee. If they somehow win that Super Regional against Tennessee, I mean, good grief. No, who knows what's going to happen? Notre Dame, I think, has already given him two extensions. Isn't that what you were telling me, Aslan? Yeah, I mean, they're a private university, so we're not able to find out what he's getting paid. But again, I mean, you know, Jim Schlossen got paid over a million dollars to leave TCU to go to Texas A&M, and I'm sure Link Jarrett's got to be in that ballpark right now. 
Yeah. And so, so yeah, I think that if, if you're even considering Link Jarrett, I think Michael Alford knows that that's what, you know, it's going to take. Now, there's other candidates. I mean, I think I love Mike Bell, who was a pitching coach at Florida State under Mike Martin Sr. for the last several years. Uh, he's also very close to the family. He's now the head coach at Pitt. Uh, there's other candidates as well. There were people that were up for the job, uh, you know, two or three years ago that a lot of people liked. And I think, um, you know, there, there's there's going to be factions. We saw it when Mike Martin Jr. got the job. There are people supporting several names that, that others will know. And, uh, you know, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if it goes much past these next few days. If it is Link Jarrett, if his season ends this weekend and it is going to be Link Jarrett, I think we're going to hear pretty quickly. If it goes on much longer, then, you know, I think the field becomes much wider. Any final thoughts as we uh, wrap things up? And actually, real quick, want to give a shout out to Slyus Carpenter, who just dropped 20 bucks. We'd fire the air horn, but we want to show some class and dignity here. And we, the man did just lose his job here after all. But uh, uh, any uh, final thoughts you have on, uh, again, Mike Martin Jr. being relieved of his duties here today, uh, Tom Lang for, uh, as head coach of uh, Florida State Baseball? Yeah, I'll be a broken record for a minute and then I'll, I'll advance the discussion. And I think, you know, just ask Ira's opinion on one of these things. But, um, this was a program that seemed stuck in the mud. Um, the approach of the plate was kind of in between. Um, a lot of bad at bats, empty at bats, poor base running, uh, timely, untimely, I guess I should say, errors in the field. Uh, it, you know, in some ways, when you when you list all the things that were wrong on the field for nine innings consistently with this program for long stretches, it's a wonder that they had the record they did, and that speaks to the heart. Uh, that they've had. Uh, they did. There were moments where they played with fire. They were successful against their in-state rivals under Mike Martin Jr. That's indisputable that they played a lot better than towards the end of Mike Martin Sr.'s tenure. Uh, but there, there were a lot of shortcomings um, and it wasn't up to the standard. I don't think Michael Alford has to apologize with using the word admittedly in his statement where he says our admittedly high standard. No, you don't have to apologize for that. That's what the standard has been for decades here in Tallahassee. Um, but I think that the advancement of the discussion is Ira, you know, for an athletic department that's been maligned is not having a whole lot of money. You don't make this move unless you're willing to not quite break the bank necessarily, but spend more money, significantly more money on baseball after showing that you have a financial commitment to soccer, to Mark Corian that he did not accept, uh, that was unequaled in the sport. And that's also combined with, uh, you know, investing a lot of money in Lonnie Alameda to make sure she stayed here. So, to me, this this is a twofold story. It is a tough day for the baseball program. There'll be a new beginning shortly. Uh, but then it also signals to me that not only is this athletic director aggressive, but they may have a couple more bucks in the coffers than we thought. Yeah, and I also think we also, a lot of times when we look at these individual positions, we talk about the money at those positions as if you know they're in a silo. The reality is this is a athletic budget with over, around $150 million. I mean, it goes up and down. I'm not sure what it is this particular year, but you're talking about a budget of well over 125, 130, $140 million. So if you're paying a baseball coach 500 grand or a million, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal, especially if it means you're changing the dynamics of your entire program. Again, to the point you guys made earlier. Now, if you're doing this just because you, you don't like the direction of the program, and you don't have a good idea what you're going to do, and you get played by some other coaches, which can happen. That's going to, you know, that's going to be a challenge to deal with. Now, if it was so bad, and going back to the Taggart situation, somebody mentioned this in the chat. The Taggart situation was so bad they felt like they had to make a move no matter what, even if they didn't have anything else lined up, they had to make a move. Maybe that's the point they were at. I mean, we don't, you know, we're not inside the program. I did think the way they played during the course of the season seemed like a team that did not seem connected. Uh, it seemed like they, if things were going well, they did fine. But if things were not going well, they did not. They played terribly on the road. And so, um, you know, those are things I think that maybe have been symptoms of what's going on underneath. And, uh, you know, again, I think, you know, it's it's one of those things where I don't think it's about the money is is, is significant, but it's not that big of a deal, especially if you think you can really turn around the program. I don't know if they can get Link Jarrett. We'll see. There's a lot of people who think they can. And, and, and maybe they can if they do it then maybe, you know, it certainly would seem to be worth it based on what he's done uh, in his head coaching tenure. Have you been, you've been to South Bend? We were in South Bend like three years ago, Ira. You want to be in South Bend as opposed to Tallahassee when you're a Tallahassee native like Link Jarrett? Come on, man. It's, uh, yeah, the, the the historic, the old guy football fan of me thinks there's some cool things about Notre Dame, uh, the campus, but no, and especially the talent level. There's, there's a lot of advantages to being the head baseball coach at Florida State. With bright futures, you can get a lot of kids in 
uh, you know, to college for pretty cheap uh, as long as they have decent grades in high school. Uh, there's a, the talent base is enormous. I mean, there's a, there's a reason all the pro scouts are, are in the state of Florida during the summer watching summer baseball. So I think Florida state, um, you know, there's plenty of things that are promising about this job. And I do think Mike Alford will be uh, willing to spend money. I mean, do we just think, you know, again, I'm trying to wrap things up. We don't want to go too long on here. But obviously, if you get the thumbs up, everybody, if you just joined, uh, joined us here, uh, we got Tom and I are talking about Mike Martin Jr. being relieved of his duties here. Uh, I mean, I saw somebody on our message boards post that, you know, obviously there better be an obvious upgrade if you're going to go ahead and do this. And if, if it isn't Link, we did make the tournament the last two years, which, you know, 64 teams do. So go ahead and measure that however you will. We did it 42 times in a row before then. So, uh, I mean, will it be hard, Tom, do you think, to, to find, like, quote, an obvious upgrade? Because uh, if it isn't Link Jarrett, I mean, Link Jarrett would, I think, we can we all agree that Link Jarrett would be an obvious upgrade? I mean, he's gone ahead and, and done right what Mike Martin Jr. really couldn't do, have his own program. And he kind of started his from scratch and got them to Supers two years in a row here. Uh, so that's a definitely a, a better sort of resume than Mike Martin Jr. has. Uh, do we just believe that what Mike Martin Jr. did in the last three years is more than likely you can find an quote-unquote obvious upgrade? Yeah, I mean, I think if you get Link Jarrett, it, it's an obvious upgrade. You're going to win that day in the press conference. But then there's also the matter of making sure that things run the way they should around here in Tallahassee and how much time should we reasonably – reasonably expect for that transition to take you know those are all questions uh down the line i, I would think beyond the idea of quote-unquote obvious upgrade you know i think we're all going to be looking at the salary number which is i get it you know um and i made the alert point that you know the difference of for a few hundred grand if you're not selling season tickets at all for something that can get you in the black is really nominal and and if you can um reinvigorate a fan base for 400 grand or 500 grand more a year then then go for it and do it but I want to see that those numbers exist, um, you know, because that would signal to me that the investment in baseball is greater. And, and make no mistake, uh, Michael Alford has been quick to act in a lot of ways, but he's also he's got a background as a college baseball player. So this is a sport that's near and dear to him. Um, to me, I think the answer that we're going to get eventually, Aslan and yay or nay, is once we see the salaries that are thrown around for the head coach and, and the assistant coaches that are going to be under the new man who is uh, in the dugout for FSU baseball. It's just wild to think that there will not be a Martin running the program in Tallahassee. And, and I guess uh, for me, the shock is starting to set in a little bit because that's crazy. And one thing I want to follow up on is that, you know, just kind of a, kind of a postscript and Corey's writing a column right now, and I'm sure that I'll end up writing something as well. But, you know, one of the, one of the problems with the way things worked for Mike Martin Jr. Is the fact that he never was able to leave and go coach his own program. And I know there's a there's a mentality, there's a, a a theme that people like to say that he never chose to leave. He applied for a bunch of jobs, man. He was up for South Alabama. He was up for three or four different jobs. Um, but the concern every time he would go through the interview process at these other schools was, is he just going to take it for a couple of years, then his dad's going to retire, then he's going to go back to Florida State. And the reality is he probably would have. And so that was their concern. And so that kind of always kind of held him back. So he stayed at Florida State. Now, I think in hindsight, he probably should have gone anyway and just been a number two somewhere else. And then maybe he got an opportunity from that part. But he, he stuck here. He tried to get it done this way. The problem with that, though, was he was always going to be fighting the just the negativity around his hiring. There were a lot of people who didn't want him to get hired. And so when you talk about is it an upgrade to get a Link Jarrett, well, it's clearly an upgrade. Link Jarrett's been a head coach in other places. He's got a head coaching tracking record, track record. Mike Martin Jr. didn't. For it to succeed with Mike Martin Jr., he was going to have to have tremendous success in these first couple of years to try to win people over, the people who, who were detractors. And that clearly wasn't happening. And so, you know, I just think this was all, the die for all of this, I think, was cast a while ago. All right. Well, stay connected to warchant.com. Ira's going to be working on something yeah. important. Phone Answer my up. phone here. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Corey will probably write. I, I'm curious to see what Corey's going to write about, so do check out warchant.com. We'll see if uh, there's any sort of uh, mention of a precedent being set with uh, what Bobby had to do with Jeff and how the school had to manage their you know relationship with Bobby Bowden on the way out and, and what we're going to have to do with Mike Martin Jr. and Mike Martin Sr. So uh, stay connected to warchant.com. Again, Mike Martin Jr., relieved of duties as head baseball coach for Florida State Baseball after uh, uh, three seasons, two and a half uh, on the record. So, Stay connected to Warchant.com. Hit the thumbs up on the way out, everybody. And uh, more reaction coming up over at the website, Warchant.com. For Tom and Ira, uh, we say thank you. Have a great day. Enjoy your week.